Welcome to the uh, Westmont Elementary School. This new building, 94,000 square feet, accommodates roughly 125 students per grade level in grades K to 6. The uh, building replaces an older elementary school built in the 1950s, which had a series of asbestos, mold, and environmental concerns. Um, the three story section that you see behind me here was the new build, uh, along with the small connector. The piece to my left was a 1972 building, which is a remaining portion of an older junior high school built in 1913 that we had demolished in order to create this site. The building as it sits uh, was constructed in the primary in about 11 months through the use of what we consider a relatively innovative approach of insulated concrete forms, or ICF, and concrete planks. Uh, the total construction project, the cost of the project was uh, just a little bit under $18 million. Uh, which uh, was one of the least expensive, if not the least expensive, new school uh, constructed in that year. And here we stand in the main entrance lobby, and one of the things we're always concerned about is security. As you come in the lockable vestibule, you're buzzed into the inner door and you're again buzzed into the space of the building. In the morning, this is all parent drop-off and walking students. As the buses arrive, we have created a direct connection, as we've done in many of our schools, to a separate bus loop. And the bus students enter the building, both flowing up via the stair and distributing themselves through the building. Visibility and supervision of the entry sequence being of the paramount importance. And here we are in the uh, bus entrance lobby. Uh, the downstairs has a direct main corridor off of the administration office where the walking students and parents come in the office side. Bus students come in from here and all can be supervised from one location because of the duality of the building. Uh, as you can see, we attempted to make the space uh, inviting because it also provides the main entrance to the nighttime features of the building located in the second floor. The, cafeteria and the library. Uh, perhaps too nice because we see that some of our furniture has been stolen from the library and placed in the lobby and it looks like a very comfortable place to sit under the tree. And the second floor lobby view again focuses on the home side of the football field and provides a lighted a beacon at night. Uh, in the stair towers, what we typically will look at is the use of a Nora type rubber, 30 by 30, uh, 5 millimeter rubber stair treads with no slip nosing, and also the color coding by individual rides to help the students uh, with the wayfinding throughout this building. And in, on each floor of the building, we utilized a different color theme to help with the progression from more primary colors in the early ages to more sophisticated colors in the upper grades. And, of course, in the corridors we have a patterning which helps with lining up the classes and movement uh, through the building. Let's head to the top floor of the building, which houses the older grades, four and five. Uh, 
stair towers and transitions such as this in a multi-story building give a wonderful opportunity to frame a view, in this case of the neighborhood, and of the uh, phenomenal trees that we uh, work to preserve. Parking lot that you see out front is actually the area that once housed the old junior high school that was demolished in order to accommodate this building. Color changes again by four to help with identification. Full glass windows allow for supervision of stair towers as well as allowing light up into the building. And at this end of the building, the stair tower, you begin to appreciate the very tight neighborhood, the large trees on a nationally recognized uh, historic street to which the new building had to reflect and uh, represent. And one of the constraints can be illustrated looking from this third floor classroom, the adjacent high school historic football field that could not be relocated, could not be moved along with track, uh, which had been associated with the old high school that had become a junior high, which was ultimately demolished to construct this building. And of course, the feature views that have been created out of the main, main stair towers look out into the neighborhood uh, and the uh, phenomenal grove of trees that themselves are in a National Historic Registry. In an elementary school, every surface wants to be a display of student work or student instruction. In this case, metal stud walls. We mentioned the uh, artscape uh, board below, but the inclusion of just several strips of pinnable and or bottom slip connected uh, tack strips allow every space to become uh, part of the student learning experience. In the corridors, one of the things that we usually will do is we'll look for the opportunity to create alcoves. These allow the doors to swing within a protected zone, but also create a area for, in this case, display. Um, each classroom seems to take on its own tonality and team and has a lot of competition here. Uh, on the corridor walls themselves, we use stud walls, but below this an MDF plank, which allowed us to give a hard surface down in the wear zone and a surface above that did not require the use of block. Or At the center of each classroom, in the fact that we had recessed the classroom entrances gives us the ability to create a series of small support rooms off of the corridor, whether it be faculty restrooms, uh, small janitor's closets, uh, student tutorial rooms, as well as grade level conference rooms. At each classroom centrum, again, we're working within a very traditional floor plan in terms of a rectilinear building, but creating all the open plan spaces of a more uh, contemporary, uh, non-standard building. In this case, what we've incorporated off of each of the centrums has been a large ganged room. Uh, what this is, is could be a future classroom, if needed for swing purposes, the use of a folding, folding door, uh, which is pinnable, uh, but also will work for small group instruction, in this case, various special education, federal programs, and similar uses. In this case, this is the other half of the subdivisible support room off of the center on each level of the building. Uh, with the partition open, you'll note that the entire room can, has casework to support small groups or an entire class if used in that mode. One of the things that we like a great deal on our windows uh, is the use Mesh type window blinds. These allow for light control for audiovisual purposes, but still uh, connection to the view and the weather outside so that we do not become a totally self contained environment. 
And again, with the configuration of our buildings with the wider footprint, by creating the support zone at the center of the classrooms allows us to add on each level directly adjacent to the classrooms a small teacher support break room. Um, and one of the features that's really uh, appreciated a great deal by students and teachers is the use of these automatic bottle fillers uh, that also count the number of waste uh, bottles that have not been needed. And in our design of restrooms, uh, we would usually look to something we call a commons area, uh, external wash up with motion activated uh, continuous type sinks, handicapped, uh, as well as large group, boys, girls, women's room, uh, or girls' room off of this side. As we in some cases, for structural reasons, end up needing a stud wall. We will always incorporate a hard metal corner, stainless steel. A large format floor tile uh, that we use again uh, gives us a cost-effective way to provide a ceramic solution as opposed to going to epoxies or other less costly products. Uh, in many cases, we will do the wet wall uh, in full height tile to, to enhance cleaning and ultimately the uh, use of uh, painted block in other locations. This helps with cost control and again this was a very um, one of the most cost-effective buildings built in this year. And each of the kindergarten classrooms has its own attached restroom, in this case the use of the smaller toilets and uh, we use a large format tile in many of our restrooms which provides a more cost-effective yet durable solution. And in the use of flooring, uh, we go with a carpet tile that is removable for the story time area. And uh, in this case, a, a cost-effective 12 by 12 VCT product. And this is one of the kindergarten classrooms located on the ground floor of the building. Uh, as you can see, as we look around the room, uh, all rooms were equipped with large digital uh, interactive uh, media screens. Looking at the ceiling, the use of uh, concrete uh, exposed planks al allowed a substantial reduction in cost and elimination of sprinklers. Lighting systems are LED uh, throughout the entire building. Uh, bulkheads that are located in here house all the mechanical systems. Uh, exterior window walls are contained, but uh, you'll notice a very deep pocket uh, as a result of the insulated concrete force form system that I'll speak about later. Uh, looking to the back of the room, uh, we have the student wardrobes, uh, starting with a small seat area that we always like to have because you have to put the shoes on and off. The student, a uh, better one here, student wardrobe for the for everyday use and storage use above. Storage is always important uh, in a building, as you can see. Uh, each room has a rest, has a uh, only its own restroom, plus also sink uh, assembly. And as we move from the early childhood floor into the upper levels of the building, you will notice directly outside the provision of a small kindergarten-only play zone. And of course, this classroom illustrates the fact that with modern furniture, the proper selection, in this case of a semi-octagonal uh, desk, can allow for all sorts and types of different groupings uh, as desired by the teacher. Uh, and we're in a fifth grade classroom, and of course, grade uh, by grade, the learning styles do change. In this case, we're bringing the Apple computers in uh, for in-room instruction. Uh, they have mobile carts for the lower grades. The windows, again, in this particular case, become a little bit of storage, but a wonderful view and frame of the community beyond. The use of carpet tile, again, in college are a little more age-appropriate, moving away from primary for the older students. And one of the features in the upper grades that this particular client was interested in was the ability to co-teach. So in this case, Classrooms were gangs with 
accessible door to adjacent classrooms so that there could be twinning of the instructional curriculum. Again, uh, when, uh, when possible, we're looking for pin-up and display surfaces. Uh, when we can, we will use full height walls of a what's called a wall carpet, which provides both sound soak capabilities over a homosote type of product, as well as the ability to pin up and create displays within classrooms. And in addition to the comfortable areas that have been created in the classrooms, featuring the uh, Promethean board and interactive learning, uh, are what we'll call reader roost, a very comfortable small area with a wonderful view out into the community uh, and the adjacent homes, as well as a place for individual con contemplation. Substantial storage has been provided in the classrooms wherever possible. Uh, the classrooms themselves have an L-shaped configuration where they're offset. Uh, this allows for a small area for individual instruction or an aide to come in if we're doing classroom-based uh, assistance. Classrooms, of course, had sinks. Uh, in this particular case, most of the classroom is carpet tile in the upper grades with a hard goods underneath the area which might get water, water or dirt uh, during time of season. And again, uh, student wardrobes individually within, within the building and a substantial storage as could be provided. Uh, here we are in a third grade classroom on the second floor. As you can see, they've achieved a very cozy environment. Again, augmented with the uh, digital interactive uh, touchscreen, but even more so, the original planning of the building provided for window nooks. Uh, in this particular case, it becomes small story time areas. In this particular case, we transition from the all new 65,000 square foot classroom wing into a salvage portion of the building was built in the early 1970s, but totally reconstructed to accommodate specialty support functions for the elementary. In this particular case, the conversion of a former industrial art shop into a series of suites, art associated with STEM lab for 60 students, associated with a computer and uh, media production area. Uh, the need for a ramp was inserted because it was, was a taller space being in former industrial arts. As you move from the art room, you move adjacently into the large uh, STEM lab or STEAM lab. There are many abbreviations, but it's all the general concept of grouping subject areas. This zone, again, another former industrial art space, uh, is configured to take as many as 60 students, two classes at a time, uh, and uh, features a lot of flexibility, wheeled furniture, ceiling mounted coil power. Uh, and data uh, to allow multiple reconfigurations. The glass wall to the corridor uh, with shelving allows for display of artwork uh, when the time is appropriate in student projects so that everybody knows what's going on. And of course, one of the things you need in the STEM area is lots of storage. With an eye towards a long term, in this particular case, we utilize solid surface topping. Despite being more expensive uh, compared to plastic laminates and other products that can fail with water and abuse over the years, this is paint and chemically resistant. And outside of our STEM, art, and computer areas, of course, are the student work presentation areas. Being the beginning of the school year, we've just begun to populate the zones here. 
as the year progresses, the curtains come down and the shelves fill with student projects and demonstrations. And adjacent to the STEM classroom, which again accommodates two classes, uh, is a dedicated computer lab. And this building had a one-for-one -one, uh, student to computer uh, ratio in the upper floors, but this allows for dedicated instruction, especially associated with uh, STEM. And one of the features in having all LED lighting in the building is the ability to have infinite dimming capabilities based on the particular use, time of day, uh, or need for the room. Uh, in this case, we're standing in a second music room. Uh, this was for uh, vocal instruction. This was created from a former high school locker room that had been constructed on the former junior high school site. Uh, low ceilings, but simply the use of a curved acoustical sound baffle, uh, metal wall panels uh, with, in, with interior soundproofing uh, created a phenomenally uh, free space. In this particular case, we have another found space. This was a former large gymnasium with competition bleacher seating. And the school, by reusing this component building, was able to save over $2 million and at the same time, enough with a separate cafeteria, which we'll show you separately. The gymnasium is appropriately sized for elementary use. And through the insertion of new construction from the wind, from the doors to this distance of a stage and additional music instruction space in what they call the gymnasium. So it's really a case of found space. Working with a pre-engineered uh, metal system, such as this building was constructed of in the 1970s, had its challenges, not the least of which was how to add a stage to a gymnasium. Uh, the board had decided it wanted to have a performance space that was not originally in the program, late in design, so ultimately we chose to insert in a portion of the former gym the stage. But by positioning the stage on the sidewall rather than on the end and utilizing bleachers behind, we create a space where every view is a good view for the spring play. In this particular space was the new stage created out of the former gymnasium. And as you can see, the use of a sprung wood floor allows for dance and movement type activities. Uh, full curtains and lighting, LED lighting system allows it to be lit for both a classroom use as well as for stage. In this particular case, we had a small addition that was placed on to the older retained portion of the building in order to provide us with storage. And as you can see, something as simple as a widened hallway by four feet provides substantial storage. Elevator oversized provided food deliveries and custodial access to the second floor wing. And of course, one of the things that's often forgotten is maintenance areas and workshops. Despite not having a front to the building, or back to the building, actually every side is a front, uh, we struggle to create, and I think a very effective solution to the loading delivery area. And in this particular space, you'll see the cafeteria, perhaps not as, uh, uh, updated and snazzy as could otherwise be visualized. You know, we're looking at existing floor materials that were buffed and reused, existing space, and simply just to refit it. And here we are in the media center. Uh, this was a reconstituted space created from a number of found spaces in the old wing of the building. Uh, some very simple uses of floating clouds, basic acoustical ceilings with edges and color. The positioning of the circulation desk at the center in the work zone that goes along with that allows both patron use as well as supervision of all the zones, whether it be computer learning, 
Easy Reader, or the Storytime Zone. And here you see the use of a standard carpet product in an octagonal shape provides a very playful and cost-effective way to enliven an area. And as you look at this wing of the building, you would never guess that the school colors are red and gray, would you? Uh, this provides a classroom instructional zone within the overall library. And of course, the shelving itself is all on wheels to be movable to allow reconfiguration to occur at any given time in the future as changes to thank you for visiting even virtually the Westmont Elementary School with me.